the two, and throughout the first eight, the champion controlling the tempo did most of the chasing, the challenger looking to dance away from trouble. It is at this point where we will pick up the bout, another world title event here on Super Fights of the Month, the WBA's battle for supremacy in the flyweight division. Round nine scheduled for 15, the WBA flyweight championship. Santos Lassiar in the white trunks. Steven Muchoki in the dark trunks. Muchoki, top 10 flyweight, the European 112 pound champion, captured his crown October 17, 1980, with a 12th round knockout of Ray Amu in Copenhagen. Machoki uh, continues to backtrack, and as soon as uh, Lassiar comes in, he'll hold su for survival. He's in there to defend himself. As I said before, European fighters are definitely defensive-style fighters. You mentioned Lassiar in 59 professional fights, only 60 knockouts. Does that have the overpowering, explosive KO power? But he's known as a good combination puncher, very quick hand. Well, that's, that's very true. He's not explosive, but he wears his opponent down by a series of cumulative punching. As you can see, he's a very, very busy fighter. What I don't like about Michoki is that he continually pulls the head down. It's illegal, and he hasn't received a warning from Richard Steele, the referee, as yet. How do you see this fight up to this point, Arthur? Well, I definitely see the fight. Uh, the aggressor is, uh, an effective aggressor is always the fellow that will eventually win a fight. And Lassiar has been the effective aggressor. He's pushing the fight. The other fellow's running back, holding continually. You can't award a man who's running away from the action points. Midway through round nine, scheduled for 15, this World Boxing Association flyweight championship. Lassiar never really appears to be threatened here by him. Now he has full control of the fight. It, would, it must be very annoying to Lassia, though, to have his head continually pushed down that way. He's probably afraid that Lassia will come up and come up the bottom and he's holding him down, waiting for the referee to stop, to stop the action. The scoring in the WBA is done by the three judges. The referee is not involved in the score. The referee here is Richard Steele. Mandatory eight count in effect, and you cannot be saved by the bell. There seems to be an awful lot of head action in this fight. You'll notice uh, that they're close, the heads are close to each other, and it could eventually, uh, if it goes on long enough, turn into a butt. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round number nine. Another showing advertisements around the apron of the ring, something we are not accustomed to in the United States, except for perhaps once in a while. That has happened once in a while. It happened with me in Maryland when there was a championship in the world between Sugar Ray Leonard and Baby, the Baby Boy Green, and it had to be removed because uh, the commission asked uh, the promoter to remove it. Round nine in. And with that, the flyweight division often overlooked perhaps the Rodney Dangerfield of weight classifications in the complicated world of boxing. Here's a look at the WBC standings with Alonso Mercedes, the champion, Santos Lassiar, the WBA champion, the number one rated. Freddy Castillo, of course, following. Here's the story in the WBC with Mercedes on top, Tadashi Tamori, and the rest of that gang. Those are the ring ratings of the flyweight division, 112 pounds. And so it goes, as far as the flyweights are concerned. The Lilliputians of pugilism, those who hover around 112, certainly deserve some recognition as well, and that is precisely why we are devoting some time to the flyweights of boxing here on Super Fights of the Month this evening. So we're getting ready to send things back for round number 10 in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, in the fight between the WBA champion Santos Lassiar and Steven Muchoki. And a reminder that next month, Super Fights of the Month will feature James Green and Mike McCallum, top-rated junior middleweights. That'll be coming up live on the 23rd of February, just about a month from now. Let's go back to Denmark for more of the flyweight fight. And scheduled for 15, the WBA flyweight championship. Being seen here on Super Fights of the Month. So far, no major cuts in a relatively clean fight. Fans from time to time have been calling for more action via the rhythmic applause. 
fight taking place in Copenhagen, Denmark. The hometown favorite, so to speak, is Stephen Wuchoki, although born in Kenya, man of the black trunk. He resides now in Denmark and has fought all of his fights in Denmark. Steve, did you notice the way Machoki came out in that round? He, liked, he was very much in doubt to come out. He just kind of hesitated and, and allowed Lassia to approach him. He's a kind of a docile kind of a fighter. There he is holding again, continually holding. He hasn't been warned for that as yet. Two minutes remaining in the 10th round. Santos Lassiar, his second title defense. The WBA flyweight champion. Born January 31st, 1959 in Argentina. Lassiar is a far better fighter, but it surprises me that uh, he gets hit as much as he does. This is the second title fight you are seeing on Super Fights of the Month. The first, of course, was that uh, fight between Jeff Chandler and Miguel Iriarte. The Bantamweight Championship took place in Atlantic City, won by Joe Jeff Chandler in Philadelphia. But this is a long way from the city of Brotherly Love, Copenhagen, Denmark. Santos Lassiar, the defending champion, a lot of experience, 44-6-9. As we said, the most draws of any champion, the other title holder with more than two dead rocks is the WBC flyweight champion, Freddy Castillo of Mexico, who has four draws. Under a minute remaining in the 10th round, this is scheduled for 15. The action heating up a little bit, mostly accomplished by Lassiar in the white trunks. Here's a looping right by Lassiar, using the combinations as well during the round. Well, you can see that uh, Machoki is an experienced clincher. He knows just how to clinch him and, pu and pull you in, and he rests on you. He wears you down. There it is again. And the referee, Richard Steele, has to unravel. Richard Steele has been involved in four title fights, mostly on the flyweight level, although his last uh, his last big fight between Holmes and Spinks, so he's gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. I've noticed from refereeing many European fighters that... Uh, they seem to get the head under there, uh, and sometimes I, I think their, their objective is to butt. If you will notice, Machoki gets his head underneath there, and if it comes up, he will butt. So we are 10 rounds complete. As we once again go into the corner of Stephen Machoki, the challenger, having the legs. Massage. Al Silvani, the experienced trainer, surprises me that he does not enter the ring and he does not pull the arms down of his fighter. We'll take a look at some of the action from round 10. Good combination by Lassiar coming up. Uh, you can see that Lassiar is the aggressive fighter all throughout this fight. He keeps pushing the fight. He's throwing an awful lot of punches. He throws his punches continually, which is good. So we are between rounds 10 and 11 for the World Boxing Association Flyweight Championship. We'll take another look. That's a pretty good right hand, but as you said before, Steve, you notice that it's not explosive. If it were explosive, he think, I think he would have had him at that time. There he is holding the head down again. Machoki is really experienced with that. As we focus in on round 11, scheduled for 15. Lassiar still quite in command. Lassiar in the white. Argentinian. He is the champion. Unscarred in this fight uh, with uh, Muchoki. Got Muchoki uh, backing up a bit now in round number 11. Muchoki looks a little worn down. Yes, you're right. He does look worn down. And Lassiar looks like he's just starting out the way he came out. It looked like round one. He's in excellent shape. He's a, he's a well a stack kind of a fighter. He's very, very well built and he's got a very good balance. But again, as you said and you noticed very aptly, he's not that, he's not a big banger. The 23-year-old Santos Lassiar looking very fresh. Lassiar going for his 45th victory, but as we pointed out earlier, does not possess the ferocious knockout power. He's 16 knockouts. Lassiar did something a moment ago when they were in the ropes. The referee did notice it, but Lassiar was holding onto the ropes and hitting with one free hand. 
Joe Frazier did that pretty good when he boxed uh, Muhammad Ali, the first fight at Madison Square Garden, which I had the privilege of refereeing. Well, you have been involved in 53 championship fights to... You shouldn't say that because you'll be telling my age. <laughs> Midway through the 11th round. So Richard Steele is only 49 fights away from Arthur Mercanti in terms of title fights. Well, Richard Steele is a young man. He'll probably have that, attained that bar by the time he's around my advanced year. 35, 40, I won't throw. Ali is holding again. Chuck Muchoki is uh, a veteran holder. The action starts and he will just hold and clinch. Under one minute remaining at round number 11. For the most part, it's been Santos Bastiar, the defending WBA champion, defending for the second time. The thing that I've noticed, Machoki is holding an awful lot because he's been running so much, he's really tired. And as soon as the action starts, uh, Lasiar comes in, he'll hold. And he don't win fights holding and clinching. Machoki undefeated, 12-0, 4 by KO. Ranked at number 9 by Ring Magazine and the WBC. Number 10 by the WBA. About 20 seconds remaining now in the 11th round. I'd like to repeat again that European fighters do have... Uh, it's a traditional way of boxing, the defensive. I remember a fight in the garden where uh, a European fighter was disqualified because he failed to throw a punch for eight rounds out of a 10-round fight. Now that's the end of 11. So we enter round 13, scheduled for 50 in this world title fight for the WBA flyweight championship. Santos Lassiar in the white trunks from Argentina, looking to retain his title. Now really pouring in, Steven Mochoki. Yeah, I think Lassiar must have been told by his corner, get this fighter over. Stop chasing the guy, let's get it going. But there was a buck there because of his extreme aggressiveness. Uh, which is Bob Muchoki is now cut by a butt and he was penalized by the referee. Lassia was penalized one point for putting. What kind of effect do you think that might have on this fight? Uh are still in total command, but how do you think that might... Uh, well, because of what you said, total command, they could take five or six points away from it. This time right now, it wouldn't affect the scoring because he's, uh, he's ahead all the way. So a lot more activity in this round than in any the previous 12. About two minutes remaining in round 13. Lassiar seems to be gunning for that cut right now, and Muchoki looking arm-weary. Now Machoki's now just defending himself. He's just defending and holding and holding. Machoki's legs looking a bit rubbery at this point. Steve, Machoki's really tired from really running around that ring all night. And of course he's been pounded steadily. Uh, not with that explosive punch that you said, but uh, he is tired. We are past the midway point of round number 13. The second world title fight being seen on Super Fights. This one from Copenhagen, Denmark. Rossiar's punches now seem to be more effective, but I think that's because uh, Machoki is tired and he's feeling these punches more. There's a right uppercut, stiff right uppercut by Rossiar that got through and Richard Steele has to go to work, the referee. Now he's lining him up. Rossiar is, Rossiar in the white trunks. Here's a right hook by Rossiar. He's got that good swift combination. 45 seconds left in the 13th round. Again, Richard Steele has to unravel the two. I have a feeling that Pachoki really doesn't want to carry on much anymore because he's holding and he knows now that he's being beat to the punch continually. Now he's got Pachoki against the rope. Steele has to break him up. Here comes Lassiar moving at a right, a left. Oh, that went that was a tremendous left hook and that's the, that's the punch that really stopped and he got a final blow in there which Steele sent the back. retaining his WBA flyweight championship with a quick combination to the head of Steven Muchoki. And Lassiar puts the hands up in victory. Here come all of his handlers in his corner.
other people. And Santos Masi are lifting his record to 45, 6 or 9 with 17 knockouts. And the crowd favorite, of course, was the challenger, Stephen Machoki, who has fought all of his fights in Copenhagen, Denmark, but the champion retains his title. He doesn't appear to be tired at all. It looks like he go 13 more rounds. Really, he looks great. Looking very fresh in the corner. Santos Lassiar of Cuenca Renanco Cordoba in Argentina. Coming a long way. We'll take a look at the finishing blows. I see Lassiar is on the attack. The referee separated them. And he, he feels now that the fight possibly be, could be coming to an end. He's on the attack. He hit it again on that eye. That's been the mark. And that left hook was a beauty. And that really rumbles his knees. 